MiG-21 never scared me. MiG-23 scared me a couple times. Do you remember them? Yeah. Can you tell us? Well, there was the infamous day when I spun it twice. Um, fighting two F-16s, kicked them across the, the tail and was going to do this reversal on them. And, the, you know, they were two miles away or something. Have you ever heard a thing called adverse y'all? Mm -hmm. Adverse y'all on the F-4. If you wanted to roll left, you'd put the, the left aileron or the right aileron would go down, which would cause more lift on that wing and it would roll left. But when you got it at a high enough angle of attack, that flap going down on that side caused more drag than it did lift. And so the airplane then would yaw to the right, which put this wing then getting more lift than this one, and the airplane would actually roll left. So that was called adverse yaw. So I kick, you know, I'm bringing this MiG-23 back in a left turn, and it starts this gentle roll to the right. And it immediately brought back adverse y'all to me and all you needed to do was unload the angle of attack and it was good well this thing did two converging barrel rolls stopped in space about 40 degrees nose high y'all threw me against the side of the canopy and took off spinning and one of these f-16 guys asked me he says are you okay <laughs> I said, no but that gave me a lot of confidence because if when you're task saturated, the first thing that goes is your hearing. It's called audio exclusion. You know, you're busy and you don't hear things. But I heard this guy and I said, you know, you got this. You know what to do for it. Let's give it a shot. So I did the spin uh, recovery procedure. And after about a spin or two, it popped right out about 70 degrees nose low. And I don't know what I am now. I'm maybe 15,000 feet or something. And I'm doing this recovery, which is going to be down about 12 or 13,000 AGL. And it's not a very aggressive recovery, but it's just a normal recovery. And when it's about 45 nose low, the nose pops to the horizon. Didn't fly there, popped there. So you knew the AOA was about 45 degrees and the flogger wasn't going to take that. And sure enough, it yawed, threw me against the side of camp again, flipped upside down, started spinning upside down. But I had just had some very recent spin recovery experience in the MiG-23. <laughs> so I said, let's give it another go. So I give it another go with the spin recovery procedure. And sure enough, it pops out 70 degrees nose low inverted. I roll it right side up. You know, I'm now down below 10,000 feet, but I've got, I can see the desert floor. And I just basically say, Ted, do not let this airplane depart on you again. And I do a very gentle recovery to for it. Maybe clear the desert floor by 2,000 feet. The airfield's back there. I just do a gentle turn and said, sorry, guys, I got to take this one home and uh, went back and landed. And the uh, funny thing was I, I wasn't scared during that whole thing. I go back, I land, I'm rolling out. I got it down probably to 60 knots and then I get scared. I can just feel my heart and my chest pounding. And I, I went to the D-arm area and I shut it down and uh, got out and kicked the nose gear and hurt my foot and started hoofing it back to the squadron until Paco came out in the Jeep and picked me up and gave me a ride. But uh, yeah, that was, that was probably my worst experience in it. I had one other one where, um, where on an FCF, uh, one of the ramps stopped doing about 1.7 and it started doing these uncommanded rolls. And to solve that, if it kept doing it, the only thing you could do was when the nose came up, up, when you were upright, you had to pull the nose up. And when you were inverted, you had to push. And you had to just get in the nose up and up to get the speed down enough to where you could get the wings forward, to where the spoilers would work, to where you could counteract that roll caused by the yaw differential on that one engine intake. And uh, But fortunately, after about a roll and a half, the ramp broke loose and went to its position, and uh, and that one worked out okay. Um, that sounds terrifying. That well, sounds more yeah. terrifying than the first one. For a couple seconds it was. But, you know, once again, you know what you're going to have to do. And if you can't do that, the only alternative is, is to shut the engine down to get it to go slow enough. Because hmm. as we've talked about before, if you're going faster than 1.5 Mach in an air model and you bring the throttle to idle, the burner will blow out. But the core engine still runs at 100% RPM until you get down below those speeds. 
and 100% RPM and a flogger with wings at 72 degrees, it doesn't slow down very fast at all. Mm. So, you know, I had some plans that I could do, but when you got a single engine airplane, you don't want to shut that thing down. That's the last thing you want to do. There was the one other time when the flogger saved my life, and I'm grateful for that. And that was a day when I had, I was at 15,000 feet and it was a ground model flogger, a flog, um, MiG 23 BN flogger F. And I hit a bird right in the center of the windscreen doing about 630 knots cow. And that center windscreen on that ground model flogger had 17 layers of plastics and laminates. And that bird broke 14 of the 17 layers, shattered the windscreen, couldn't see out the front of that. Came back, I think picked up a T-38. He did the approach to the runway with me on the wing, and in the flare, he dropped me off and, and landed. So, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful that, uh, that I was in that ground model flogger that day. Would you, um, are you comfortable, would you be comfortable talking about the other mishap that involved um, going too fast and not being able to slow the airplane down in time? You don't have to if you don't want to. But uh, a little, if you want to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, we we don't have to mention any names, but the, you know, or, or any any places or anything like that. But there was another uh, MiG twenty three loss that involved going too fast. I, I guess it'd be interesting to hear an explanation around the aerodynamic effects that were, were that occur inside the inlets. Um, you know, why it is that they the Russians introduced that control lock to make sure that you couldn't. You know, retard the well. You can retard the throttle, but the engine won't, as you just described, won't spool down until it hits certain um, me- metrics. Um, can you describe what that what what took place in that flight? Your understanding of it, and and, and what the sort of aerodynamic phenomena were that what were occurring. Yeah. First of all, let me talk about that speed coast down interlock because that is not unique to Russian engines. We got the same thing. Uh, jet engines do not like to go take air from high supersonic and and take it to an idling engine at low subsonic. It, a lot of times it'll just tear the engine apart. So the same thing for ours, although I think ours, uh, like an F-16 engine, which was the Pratt & Whitney F-100-200, I think it was 1.1 Mach, if I'm not mistaken. If you were above 1.1, you brought the throttle to idle, burner blew out, but the engine stayed at mill power until you got below 1.1, and then it rolled to idle. But it wasn't as noticeable, as dramatic as it was in that in the flogger being at 1.5 Mach. Uh, so this guy is on TR2. He doesn't have a lot of time in the airplane. He hasn't done a lot of academic preparation for it. The briefing for the flight was on the canopy rail. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of background, a lot of system knowledge of things that can go wrong and what you do for him. So he's on TR2, which used to be a mock run, taking the airplane out to about Mach 2.2 or 2.3. Limits 2.35, as I recall. Um, And so he's taken it out on this, and he's got a T-38 in the chase plane. But at least in my opinion, the T-38 didn't chase him correctly. You don't chase a MiG-23 with a T-38 starting from line abreast and go, burner's ready now, because that MiG-23 is just going to walk away from it. The way I used to do it is I'd drop back three miles with the T-38. I'd, I'd, I'd just do a big angle of attack recovery, drop back three miles, do an in-place 180, which now put me three miles in front of him, call for the burners. You know, After a minute or so, he's going to be passing me, but I can still see him. And, and when he gets out to Mach 2, you know, he's three or four miles in front of me, and I can see him, but he's not eight or ten miles in front of me. So the T-38 guy loses sight of him. Then, apparently what happens, from what I understand, the flogger, you have to understand, it kind of looked like an F-4. The intake ramps were the same as an F-4 and stuff, but it was a single-engine airplane. And what it was possible to do was get a compressor stall on half of the face of this compressor with the air backed up in one uh, one intake, but not in the other, which caused so much drag on the face of the compressor that the plane yawed and rolled. MiG-23 flight controls. 
the wing, when it's forward, has full spoilers on the wings. Doesn't have ailerons. Rolls with spoilers. As the wing sweeps back, the spoilers have to fade out or they dig into the side of the fuselage such that when the wings are all the way back at 72 degrees, there's no spoiler at all. It's rolling totally with differential stabilator, which under normal conditions felt absolutely normal. Rolled just like you would expect it to roll. But when you've got this stall in one one side of the intake, one intake and one side of the compressor, which causes this roll, which causes this yaw, uh, this roll, the stabilator doesn't have enough control authority to counteract that. So you've got to get something to counteract it. And the only thing they'll do it is spoilers. So you've got to get the airplane slowed down enough that you can get the wings forward to get the spoilers to work into where they can stop this roll. And there's only two ways you can really do it. One is because if you're going straight and level with a MiG-23 doing Mach 2 and you bring the throttle to idle, which means the burner blows out, but the engine stays at mill power, you're sitting there watching this. You're doing Mach 2. <laughs> 1.99. There's not enough airspace to get that thing to slow down to 1.5 for that uh, speed coast down interlock to release the engine to let it roll to idle. So you either have to start jacking the nose up and when it's when it's rolling, when it's inverted push and when it's right side up pull to get it to slow down to do that. Or you got to shut the engine down to get that engine not producing thrust where you can get the wings forward, where you can stop the roll. And that would be challenging for a guy that's got 50 or 100 sorties in it. For a guy that's only had one sortie previous to this, it was just more than he probably he probably didn't know what was happening or didn't know how to correct it if it, if it was happening. So he ends up jumping out and uh, he dies in the injection. Thanks for tuning in to 10% True. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to subscribe and if you're on YouTube, hit the bell button to make sure you get notified of the next episode. Thanks and take care.